afternoon all and happy new year 2013 may this year bring you lots of happiness opportunities peace things you want to do hope uh, you realize ambitions or start to realize them etc now this is a chess channel and what a what a way to start the year i think than with uh, an interesting game and the most extreme form of chess you would think might not create interesting games that of bullet chess well actually sometimes bullet games can be quite interesting and aesthetically pleasing and one has been drawn to my attention from reddit recently it was between hawkeye a german gm against the joker who i believe is from israel i believe the real names are roland schmalt for the hawkeye nickname and ronan harsvi is the Israeli, Israeli Israel GM playing black. Let's have a look at this game and maybe we can do a second pass in chess based light to see the technical details but here we can get to see the move times which are critical for appreciating the extreme speed that these moves were played and I'm sure we, we should be forgiving mistakes at this speed bullet. So E4 was played by Hawkeye and we see Knight c6, a move which I particularly like in chess cube war zones. It's a nice surprise weapon, sometimes called the tango system, because the knight is offering to dance around the board from the queen side to the king side quite often. We see knight c3, white's well, not daring to play d4 and d5, just trying to keep a solid position. So now we have kind of Vienna game transposition, but quiet Vienna with g3, none of this f4 here. So this is very solid. Okay, bishop c5, eyeing already that sensitive f2 square, is white worried? No, he carries on fianchettoing for the moment. Knight f6, knight g e2, d6, black's not committing to castle just yet. h3, trying to avoid any annoying use of the g4 square here. Bishop g4 could have been an annoying pin, especially with consider black's grip on this d4 square in this position. Bishop b6. Okay. Now white finally castles. Black castles. King h2. Getting out of the way, out of the way, unpinning this f pawn on this diagonal means now that f4 is on the cards in some lines. Rook e8. f4 is indeed played. Okay. Is there any downside to playing this? It looks like the sort of routine thing which should be quite effective. For example, if white's allowed f5, then maybe g4, and the natural knight g3, g5, gain a bit of space, use the d5 square. That would be quite nice. Lots of space to look forward to, d5 control to look forward to. So what does black want to do about this? Well, black in this position took the pawn, and you might think, is it just for this frontal pressure on e4, or is there something else involved? White takes with a g-pawn, and now I think we start to see a series of very surprising moves. And this first move, I wonder if you can guess what black played here. If I give you 10 seconds, starting from now. Okay, knight g4 check, a very aggressive move indeed. Unveiling that the queen can actually come to h4 here if the white pawn dares to take. And there might be some trouble ahead. So what does white do? Does he believe in all this? Surely there's bishop h3, for example, as a defense. King g3 is played, he does believe it. And we'll check in the second pass if that was playable or if white was getting exterminated because maybe after bishop g4 in that in that line h3 is difficult to defend knight g1 bishop takes g1 for example so here king g3 seems a plausible way of dealing with this without encouraging black to have a number of forcing moves available and that's a little trick i think in blitz especially that if you can't really see that many moves ahead and you don't want to be trapped in, in the opponent's long forcing sequences. If you can just somehow bypass the forcing sequences, 
with a seemingly crazy move like King G3, then maybe that sometimes that should be good. In theory, if the knight's driven back, white can get on, maybe gaining space in the center, maybe d4, you'd have things to look forward to. But, okay, what happens here now? Okay, so, here, we see knight f2. What is the meaning of this? Surely rook takes knight, you wonder, and two pieces would be very good to pick up. Okay, so white in this position, who's a grandmaster, does play rook takes knight. So what absurdity is this? Why would black want to do this? Is he just trying to win the game on time? Is it going to be a bit dodgy to give two minor pieces up for the rook? I wonder if you can spot the next move here that the joker plays if I give you 10 seconds starting from now want more than 10 seconds remember this is only a bullet game look they've only spent about 10 seconds each here and I'm giving you 10 seconds on one move okay so white as I, as I've argued was trying to cleverly bypass the opponent's forcing moves and we all know how cruel incredibly cruel the game of chess is and sometimes we wonder why we love the game it's so cruel and punishing that the very thing that white is trying to avoid a long forcing move sequence unfortunately is invoked in this position because black in this position plays queen h4 check and oh dear, what do we have? A long forcing sequence, a spectacular queen sacrifice, invoking a series of very forcing moves now. Clearly, if king f3, that's not a good idea. Queen takes f2, can't be avoided. If king h2, just take the rook. Not very nice. Okay. So white takes the queen. The king is stepping up the board. But surely, hold on, bishop f2, there's knight g3. Can't white defend this? Is he really getting mated by black's army in this position? Bishop takes f2, so not too many choices. Knight g3, or the king could venture out to g5 or h5. Knight g3 is tried. Now what does black do in this position? Why is this so clever? Okay, it looks pretty bad for a king to be on h4, but does black really have the resources here? to do something with that king in that position. What is black's next move? Okay, let's see. Rook e6, bringing the rook to bear on h6. That's actually very dangerous here. The knight being pinned means if the king has to step over here, or what about queen h5, you might ask? Is that so bad? If the king steps, then f6 is asking just to be mated. Let's see what happens. King g4. Possibly there are better moves. Possibly, and it needs investigation. Queen h5 was better. How many seconds did white take to play king g4? Because he's voluntarily going into a discovered and double check here with king g4. He had 46 seconds, and he took basically two seconds to play that move. Maybe just expecting rook g6 here, and then maybe king f3, and then wondering what all the fuss is about but can the king be stopped from retreating backwards here to make rook g6 more effective what does black actually want to do in this position okay knight d4 it stops the king's retreat so this is being made much more effective now that this double check discover check is also pretty dangerous if we go back to that other line so what does white want to do now he tries f5 so that covers it seems g6 and h6 potentially if d3 that will cover h6 but for the moment isn't g6 covered not really hold on a sec this pawn might be pinned check using that pin oh dear so we have here the start of a very tricky position now because hold on a sec if king f4 maybe bishop takes g3 winning another piece this is not so nice. What does black want to do in this position? King f4 is played. 
other alternatives. We'll check out on the second pass, but um, okay. Rook takes g3, not bishop takes g3. Black is leaving a lot of pieces here on f2 just to stop the king coming back to the e3 square. So maintaining his attack very calmly. And now what resources can be used to try and make the king? This is getting pretty dangerous with the, the rook are now attacking the bishop as well. So what does white want to do? Does he want to do something like his king safety or this bishop? It's very tricky to play. He plays queen f1, protecting the bishop and attacking this bishop as well. It seems a very useful move, but any forcing moves for black? g5 check. Oh dear, there's not too many options here. Surely it has to just be taken en passant. Yes, and now check. check. Oh dear, the king is now being forced forwards you see that mechanism that just happened there that the fg a weakness of that last move was the e6 square it was covered and now with g5 check it's been made available the king is forced to step forward here and now going into another discovered and double check just with minor pieces here knight g7 check okay but hold on hang on king f4 the horror of it is there something like knight h5 check the horror of a knight checkmating the king here because where can the king go after that so can it really go to f4 it doesn't seem as though that's possible so if that can't go to f4 then only king f6 is possible king f6 is played and now we see rook takes g6 the king has been drawn into territory here which it doesn't really want to walk on king e7 check and the king is being drawn to that first rank. King d8, will the king munch on c7 and escape? Or will it be stopped from doing so? It's stopped from doing so. The bishop just protects. And now we are faced with this menacing threat of rook e8. What can white do apart from a spike check of queen f7? What can white do? He doesn't play queen f7, he just allows himself to be aesthetically mated. So it's been termed one of the most brilliant bu bullet games ever played. It's in the library of the ICC. I just thought uh, it's interesting to see we can have beauty in a bullet game. And maybe we should look at this game in the second pass. More detailed analysis. It's uh, certainly a very interesting game. But let's not look at the technocracies as a reason not to appreciate the beauty of the game. It was only a bullet game. Look at the time spent. The Joker had spent less than 30 seconds, 26 seconds. He's still got 34 seconds left. Congrats to that Israeli, Israeli GM there and unlucky Hawkeye. OK, let's check it out. Check it out in the second pass. Thanks very much. OK, let's look at this game in second pass from Black's point of view. And let's turn on an engine, Kibitza. OK, so e4, we see knight c6, knight c3, a kind of Vienna type position, close Vienna, g3, quietly playing it for f4 in a delayed fashion. So bishop g2, white's just playing for f4 slowly by first tucking his king on h2 here. And now f4 is played so it looks as though the only slight downside well this bishop it looks like a ferocious bishop but uh, this tactical exploitation wasn't actually sound after e takes g takes we see the move knight g4 was it indeed too dangerous uh, for white to take that's the first question i think it might be check Bishop takes g4. How to defend h3 here? Rook f3 would just take rook. Knight g1 would just take with check. That's collapsing. And actually, we don't take on h3. We just take the queen here. If knight, g, knight g1 is not playable. So that's not very pleasant at all. So white did the right thing. Maybe king g3. Then we saw knight f2. And now maybe there's a little bit unsound. Or is it? What is going on here? Rook takes f2. And the move the engine likes is bishop f2. 
just going for the h3 pawn so say takes and this should be just about equal so check we take here and technically it might be a bit, bit equal at this depth it looks as though black's got some chances here but no black played a much bolder move which might not be that sound nevertheless brilliant queen h4 check the engine spits this out uh, as being very bad okay so let's see why so king takes h4 bishop takes f2 fine knight g3 as played and we see the try rook e6 okay so in this position it does seem as though white missed a key defensive opportunity uh, with queen h5 in particular here if queen h5 does that spoil things without any rook h6 if rook h6 is played the queen can counter sacrifice itself and we wouldn't have had that beautiful motion of the king coming down the board being mated so queen h5 is a bit of a fly in the, in the technical ointment of this game but uh, okay we see the blunder king g4 and now okay again it should just be about equal knight d4 is played and why should this be just about equal f5 as in the game check okay here white goes wrong king h5 apparently might help save white <laughs> this seems a bit tricky though know, to play so if rook takes g3 here what is the key improvement queen f1 g6 king h6 and it's more difficult for the white king to be mated here let's say bishop e1 white's better knight d5 white's actually okay here it seems uh it looks as though it might be dangerous for rook g6 but uh it's not i think the king can just come to h5 now okay so white was blundering here with the move king f4 so king h5 was apparently the last way to go if king h4 actually in this position there's a beautiful move bishop takes f5 and if takes check knight takes g3 we're going to kind of seesaw check motion and then knight f4 wow okay so only move if white wanted to survive the clinical precision move is king h5 here apparently uh, so white plays king f4 instead and now after rook takes g3 black is actually technically better uh, white has to try and sacrifice his queen apparently with queen g4 to try and cling on here and given a bullet game that's the best practical chance at least the king's not getting mated but in the game continuation we saw queen f1 and now forcing fireworks drive the king down the board g5 check forcing fg oh no other move knight e6 check and this is a mate in free now and there could have been another way of playing the mate for those interested rook f3 so if takes here check so the, the bishop's actually blocking the king's path back h5 another beautiful mate so that's another way of skinning the cat here knight g7 check is another mating path and now in fact king f8 is even more optimal i think king f8 just means the e7 square is taken away so that rook g6 is the next move whatever white does in this position rook g6 is mating white next so slightly suboptimal move is played here instead rook takes g6 which allows king e7 the king's allowed to live another move so here there's now a mating two with bishop h4 check uh, so that that's a mating two here so on queen f6 
bishop f6 is mate but and the king is allowed another chance another move anyway with rook e6 so it's just mating free now again okay and again bishop h4 check is uh, the most optimal it seems in this position bishop h4 check so if queen f6 takes in this position knight e8 believe it or not is mate the knight retreat so that's the most optimal mate here but um in this position bishop b6 leaving the very attractive rook e8 so if white wanted to delay things he's got queen f7 but actually no 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 there's another move there's another move to stop rook e8 queen b5 would delay things now if queen b5 had been played because if rook e8 there's queen takes e8 here okay what is the mate now it's delayed it's delayed king f8 what is the threat is the threat still just rook e8 no the threat here okay let's see if say knight a4 bishop d7 check discovered check so that after king takes again rook e7 this king is helping use the e7 square to deliver a mate like that so if it had been delayed with queen b5 yes then a good move is king f8 king f8 in this position and you might wonder also what about rook takes e4 what on earth is rook e4 about i think rook e4 might be threatening another attractive mating sequence just king f8 here avoids any knight f6 check and what happens here there's ridiculous moves being prompted because I think the threat in this position is ah just taking here discover checkmate now after this king e7 is stopping the king use e7 so bishop h3 is threatened as well as bishop e6 and I think also other moves knight e6 is threatened bishop f5 bishop g4 knight e6 is another mate threat in this position okay so queen b5 wasn't played so we we were allowed to see instead in the game continuation knight d5 just allowing rook e8 mate interesting bullet game for sure you don't usually see white king being sucked down the board to the d8 square to be mated like that Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much. And Happy New Year.